Hey guys, it's Jordan here from Switchwatch, back again with another review, this time of Gekido Kintaro's Revenge, an old school beat em up from Naps Team. Uh, thanks to those guys for providing this review code so I can tell you guys if it's worth your hard earned cash or not. Anyways, the question of the day is I think it's quite a simple one. What is your favourite retro beat em up? Maybe Streets of Rage, maybe Golden Axe, or something a little more obscure? Let me know in the comments below. Let's get on with it. Sometimes life can throw up the most oddest of surprises. I can surely bet that no one would have possibly imagined that a forgotten 15 year old beat em up on the Game Boy Advance would find a new home on the Nintendo Switch. Well, it has. Gekido Kintaro's Revenge is back from the dead to breathe new life on the Nintendo Switch. The Gekido series was a short lived double entry from Nap's team, first on the PlayStation and then on the Game Boy Advance. And in all honesty, I have zero recollection of either of them existing. So I'm obviously primed to see how it stacks up today without being tainted by nostalgia. The story tells the short tale of Tetsuo, summoned by his teacher to investigate strange happenings in a faraway village. Zombies. Yeah, zombies have risen and have decimated the small locale. As he investigates the strange goings on, he'll come across a variety of interesting folk who may help him or hinder him. While not an especially interesting story, and it is some would say rather superfluous, I do appreciate the attempt at storytelling with its cinematic cutscenes. It has an almost noir feel to it and even though they are rather short and abrupt, I like it. It tries, which is not something you can always say for the genre, especially one this old. In the audio department you have a choice between the original score and a new updated one. While both are effective and suit the game well, I do think there is an air of repetition to the soundtrack overall. There doesn't seem to be too many tracks which is a shame. There's not much more to say to be honest, the sound effects are somewhat repetitive too in the fact that your character's hya when he attacks is rather annoying. Graphically the game has a really nice sprite work to it and is very much in keeping with the original release. Sprites are huge and detailed, almost like you'd find in a late Neo Geo fighting game and that's really commendable considering this is technically a Game Boy Advance game. For the time, this must have looked amazing on a small handheld screen. What I do love about retro re-releases is options and like the audio before it, Gekido has a nice amount when it comes to the visual department. For a start, you can choose to have the original cutscenes play or new ones. Here's a short comparison. I personally prefer the new one, even if there's a certain charm to the originals, I just prefer the character art, everyone looks less uh, weird. There's also a couple of display options, you can stretch the screen, add a filter on it and so on. Personally I just stick with the original options as I felt it just looked better. Looking at the screenshots or the combat, you may think that the gameplay is a standard beat em up affair, beating the stuffing out of zombies who oppose you. While there are very strong elements of something a bit standard, Gekido does go a few steps further with its ambition in certain areas. For a start, the aforementioned cutscenes and the story elements bring cinematic nature to it. Plus the exploration side of the game makes it stand out as not your average side scrolling beat em up. You don't just move left to right, you have some semblance of freedom as you explore the basic environments. You can enter buildings, climb or descend ladders and even take part in a bit of platforming. I'm sure this has been done before in a beat em up, but for me it's actually nice and refreshing. Even though this kind of freedom is basically a facade, it did its job and made me feel much less restricted. As you walk around the environments, you'll find people to talk with, items to pick up such as keys to unlock doors that are somewhere. It's simple but nice, I appreciate the adventure aspect to it. What you really want to know as beat em up fans is about the combat, the punching, the kicking, the combos and the throws and I think Gekido does a decent job although it does keep it very simple. There are a few different moves but not too many, mostly thanks to the two attack buttons. Yes, two. From a Game Boy Advance game they decided to keep it authentic in that regard and so you are limited to just a punch and a kick. Now I will tell you a flaw that has always plagued me as a gamer. In these fisticuff beat em ups and straight up fighting games, I'm a bit of a button masher which, which does take away some of my authority from what it truly has to offer hardcore beat em up fans. I really did actually struggle to pull off any moves, in fact I'm not entirely convinced there are too many in here. If you press both the A and the B button together at the same time you'll unleash an all encompassing panic attack that knocks most enemies away while dealing a little bit of damage. It's not overpowered which I like and it's not difficult to get which I also like. 
You'll have it available every few seconds, which is nice. And I found that I used it a lot. In fact, it does have its tactical uses too against some of the more trickier enemies. It's a pretty short game if you know what you're doing. As long as you don't get a game over from the small amount of continues, you'll probably have eaten the story mode up in about two hours. For me, I did find it a little on the difficult side, mainly because it does have a lot of cheapness to it, similar to those found in arcade games. Enemies popping out of nowhere, traps slamming down out of the unknown, fighting against faster, more capable foes. First time players will get cut out so many times like I did, and although they did help me learn the game much better, I can't help but feel the game was overall quite an annoyance rather than being fun. The gameplay as a whole is simple and interesting, although it may test your patience with plenty of cheap moments often found in the genre. Outside of the main story mode, Naps Team have gone the extra mile to include more stuff for you to get your money's worth out of. There's a basic survival mode, which I'm never really keen on unless it has some depth to it, of which this doesn't seem to. Then there's a far more intriguing Relic Hunter mode, which is a roguelike experience as you traverse through procedurally generated levels, finding items to collect. I found this to be just as entertaining as the main game to be honest, and I enjoyed battling in the unknown, rummaging around for relics. Both of these extra games and the story mode can be played with up to two people, and in my opinion, that's always the best way to go for a beat em up. As for value, it's a retro re-release, which is a surprisingly rich market on the Switch, even if Nintendo themselves aren't getting in on the action too much. We have both Hamster and Zero Div pulling out the arcade classics on a weekly basis, and Gakido is almost double the price of those at £11.46. Sure, it is a little more than a port. In fact, much more work has gone into this than probably a dozen of the retro arcade releases put together, but I feel the price should have been nearer to them than what it is. Overall, Gakido is an interesting revival, Bringing back a commendable Game Boy Advance effort was a highly unlikely surprise. I mean, it's a decent short beat em up, spruced up a little with nice extra modes. It's not outstanding or great, and I do think the price is a tad higher than what it should be, but it's still a solid choice for beat em up fans. What I'm more interested in is where the series can go from here. I would love to see a new entry in the series with updated mechanics and the deletion of the retro faux pas found in this entry to stop the annoyances souring the experience at times. Still, it's a nice stopgap, and it stands proudly amongst the beat em up crowd currently on the Switch. I would give Kikido a 6.5 out of 10. Okay guys, you know what to do. If you're a regular Switch watcher, then hit that like button and leave a comment below answering the question of the day. What is your favorite retro beat em up? I think I've got to go with Golden Axe personally. As always, we appreciate you watching and subscribing. We've just hit 7,500, and as you know, we've finally got contact with Nintendo. And it's all because of you guys. Seriously, thank you so much. Head over to our website, switchwatch.co.uk to read reviews, news, and features. It's worth it, guys. I've been Jordan from Switchwatch, and I'll see you guys next time. Take care.